I'm Ted Souvre and I was born here at Leoville Farm, top of Gravedelec Hill in the Lowville area. I spent my entire childhood days at this property where I was born. My childhood memories of the occupation obviously are limited from I would say 1942 to our liberation. My initial memories I suspect are of the walks and travel limitations which would have been between Lowville Farm on a twice daily basis to my primary school not too far from St. Juan's Parish Hall at Haut de Marais. My abiding memory of school days at primary school were the practice runs to the air raid shelter. The air raid shelter was found in the corner of the girls playground and not only do I see the blast wall in front of the two entrances but I still hear the old school handbell being rung to warn us to be ready not necessarily for imminent danger but certainly for the usual practice air raid uh, movement between class and the shelter. Um, obviously looked after by very caring teachers and the headmaster Arthur Downer. Back here at Leoville Farm, I can remember in the farmyard the making of potato flour and watching it dry in the sunshine and Grandmother Sivray would always be extremely careful that it would be absolutely white. I can also remember the smell of the sugar beet syrup being made on the treppy in the bakehouse. The bakehouse was made available to get to because one of the early memories was father knocking down part of the wall between the kitchen passage and the bakehouse to avoid going out at night because of the demands of curfew. An abiding memory is of the German soldiers marching up and down with the familiar marching song E-I-E-I-O. Um, as children I don't think we were too frightened but we were not used to the colour of their uniforms and especially their um, helmets. The occupying forces also um, had taken over the headland adjacent to the farmland um, to make trenches and dugouts to have observation places over Grebdelec. We seldom went to Grebdelec, it was out of bounds, but I have a vague recollection of some very, very high barbed wire gates about 25, 30 yards from the Prince of Wales. The thing I do remember observing, um, perhaps not actually during the occupation, but very soon after the occupation, was the um, machine gun on top of the Martello Tower. Um, that was quite an eye-opener to us. Um, similarly, where they made their trenches and dugouts on the headland, I can still smell the beautiful smell of the pine posts that held back the shale and the soil from falling into their semicircular dugouts. One German soldier attempted to uh, dig a trench in our front garden and mother who was quite of a nervous disposition ran to my father who was working in the farmyard and said Ned come quickly there's a German 
working in the front garden. I think he's digging a trench. And Dad, who was always very, very placid, said, well, let him. He's either going to sweat or give up because under nine inches of soil was sheer hard Jersey rock. The German gave up and moved across the road to higher ground. The other things I do remember was that um, there was very, very little traffic, so we were quite safe along the roads. As we went to school, um, I'm not sure at what point during the occupation, but certainly between Leoville and the crossroads at Le Seaboul, um, it was our sad sight to see some of the slave workers helping to construct the unfinished railway that ran diagonally across the farm's biggest field at Midhurst. Um, it got to sleeper level, but the rails never appeared and it was never used. Um, the walls, in fact, along that road still show the scars of where those slave workers had had to bring the soil level down to road level in a similar manner to where St. Juan's Methodist Chapel um, is found. The railway crossed there as well on its way to Le Toche. I suppose if I'm honest, um, my memory of any distant travel are limited to perhaps one or two visits to my maternal great parent, grandparents at Trinity. And that would have been with horse and van or horse and trap, or perhaps uh, sitting on side saddle across the um, across the bar of father's bicycle but those were on very very rare occasions. Um, I do remember my grandmother um, walking all the way to Tr from Trinity to St. Juan's uh, vice versa in, in the one day to help with darning and knitting. Now I have visions of my holding hands apart like this with wool being moved from one to the other after it had been unraveled from one cardigan, washed and remade into another garment, um, such as gloves, mittens or socks, um, in an effort to keep us children warm. Uh, I have a memory of chillblains and how much they itched and at the same time for some unknown reason any scratch on my body would immediately turn to impetigo although being on a farm we were far better fed than some of our town folk who sadly suffered um, because of malnutrition. The other memory that comes to mind is the Red Cross parcels, both from Canada and New Zealand. Those were collected just at the top of the hill at Mr. Bower's shop, and I still have visions of those on the kitchen table being opened and eyes wide open at their contents. I love the processed cheese. I must admit I did like the corned beef and even the cooking chocolate was a treat. As far as the um, liberation, the Nuring liberation, I can remember several days before we were liberated, father and a helper busy erecting a mast at the top of the farm buildings ready for a Union Jack, which I'd never seen probably before, and probably came from the old soldier in New Street, Charlie Bisson. Um, people always hoped to be liberated and never failed to, to, to think that the British would one day be there to liberate us as opposed to the occupiers. 
my memory of Winston Churchill's speech goes back to a neighbour, Mr. and Mrs. George Bode, and I heard or listened to that speech in their farm kitchen, and we children had to be ever so quiet. That brings back one memory because among the few of us who were there listening to Winston Churchill's speech was a Russian slave worker that Mr. and Mrs. Bodin had harbored for quite some months prior to the end of the occupation. Alex, as he was known, was quite fearless and would cross the fields at night to visit different people in the area. And I understand that he learned to speak English with the headmaster already mentioned, Arthur Downer, at a house called Puil de Lowville, just at the top of the road. He was cross the fields at night and meet Mr. Downer there before curfew time, obviously, and um, learn English because we were given to understand after the occupation. None of this information would be given us during the occupation for fear that we would break the secret that in fact he was a school teacher back in Russia. Liberation Day. Now that was quite a day and I have recollections of going en ville, as we used to say it, because we all spoke Jersey French as opposed to speaking English, we, in Mr. Prouton, Ted Prouton's green comma lorry. I don't know the way we went, I don't even remember where we parked, but I do remember the Waybridge, the cobblestones, and most certainly the Tommies. What a sight it was and, and the joy it gave both parents and family to see their arrival. I don't recollect the flag going up. I think we were just so astonished as children and overcome with the whole thing that that has slipped our memory. My abiding memory though of liberation for me is three days after the actual Liberation Day when we were with friends, the Votier family from just up the road, with their friends along Victoria Avenue at a house called Capri. The house is still there and the only change that I've noticed over the years is that the bay window has got a full plate glass window, glass now, as opposed to panes of glass. But I can remember sitting at that window, watching the landing craft approach St. Aubin's Bay. And once on the beach, Edward George Vautier, who was a brilliant pianist and organist, sat down at the grand piano and in true concert style, broke into the strains of Land of Hope and Glory. That stays with me and not even to this day can the last night of the proms take that memory away from me. It is my everlasting memory of the joy of our celebration at Liberation Time. Everybody mentions this marching song, E I E I O. Yeah. <laughs> I have to find that, what it really is. Um, well, it used to go E I O O O O O E I O O. And that, you, you, well, I could have mentioned it, but I didn't. But the thing that kind of stays in the memory is the noise of their jackboots. <laughs> 